Hey, Thomas Bard here with another short video for the Artisan Sound Channel. This here is a short one and a strange one because here I'm at the on the stage here on the kids stage or second stage as we call it. And um, I just wanted to show you how I'm transferring the um, setup that I've spotted here in this uh, spreadsheet that I've shared with you. Um, and basically, so let's let's go one step at a time. So here's our X32 console, and here you can see I have loaded in the um, cues and snippets into show control that I've created on my um, edit app on my PC at home that I showed you on the screen share. So here and now all the cues are loaded in there now, and cues and snippets are there. I can s scroll through them here and select one and then push go and that will change the settings over there. See? Okay, so everything is saved and stored. And now I'm in the process here of transferring the changes that I've logged in here. You can see at the top here, we have X30, X32 queues. So these are queue numbers that need to be triggered and those are mute mute channels, microphone channels that need to be muted and microphone channels that need to be unmuted. And here is the song or the music number. And here is the time that passed since the beginning of the song. So for example, here, number 16, the spark of creation reprise. That's right over here. <clears throat> so you can see uh, I created a group here that fires all of these cues at the same time. And those cues here are just simply what I named them. So this here is the actual music file that is playing. And then here, this, this is muting channel two, muting channel three. This is recalling cue number 15, recalling cue number 16. And you can see here are the time code offsets. So here, cue uh, number 15, is firing at 13 seconds after the beginning of the song and cue number 16 is firing one minute and nine seconds after the first after the cue starts and that is just simply transferred from right here you see here this is the spark of creation reprise and here I spotted 13 seconds in we have to fire cue number 15 and then one minute and nine seconds in we have to fire cue number 16 now, there's only one thing that you have to be careful about. So I had to actually research quite a bit until I found proper documentation that is, you know, powerful enough to fire, to trigger the, the changes, the program changes into the X32 console to actually switch from one queue to another. Because if you don't do that, then everything is much more complicated and you would need a whole bunch of um, commands and here. So, you know, just this simple cue here that recalls the entire setup that that I've set up in the cue and snippets. And so then what I usually do is I go down here and there's a button here that says send message. So now I'm going to hit send message and we can look over here what happens or if something happens. Sure enough, something happens. And then you can check this over here. So it's one of the skipped cues, and it's the one that is here, this boldly boldly highlighted yellow, and that is number 15. Now there's one little snack to that, and that is that these numbers here that are down there, this, this number here, you can see that's 17. So this number is based on the index number that is, so it's basically the line in this first column here, starting to count with a zero. So the top, the top one is number zero. No matter what this number here says, that doesn't matter. That's just a number for us to read. But the actual index is just going from top to bottom, starting at zero and just counting down. So that's something you just have to kind of, you know, offset in your head when you put this together. But as long as you start from the top and you work your way down, it's very simple. You just always copy that event and then raise that number down there, that 17 by one, to activate the next queue. So that's it. So I'm about halfway through the show, not quite, maybe one third. 
and I'm just, uh, you know, plotting away here, plugging away at getting this all set up so that we can have the first rehearsal with microphones already fully automated and everything will be triggered and fired from QLab. Nobody has to manually mute or unmute microphones over here or worry about anything um, not firing on time. There you go. This is Thomas Bartke signing off. Until the next video, leave a comment, like the video if you like it, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.